big old thing these wind turbines Good morning everybody, Calm Biker here Just been dropping off a sticker I, uh, I'm a proper Yorkshireman, tight through and through If I've got the opportunity to drop one off through a door and save on a stamp <laughs> Oh well <laughs> Oh I hate these tyres this morning I have actually recorded a video about how much I hate these tyres So I won't go into it again Suffice to say that in the wet, because I think I recorded that video in the dry, in the wet these tyres are even worse than they are in the dry. But yeah, no feeling at all, just feels like it's going to fold under me at any minute. Anyway, that will be an accident, and in a roundabout way, almost as if I planned it, but <laughs> as, as with most things I haven't, uh, I want to talk about accidents today or rather accident prevention I was reading an article in the IAM magazine and they were talking about driver's aids and debating whether or not they were a good thing and after reading it I don't know I, I'll try and explain why I don't know things like ABS now every new car sold in Europe has to have ABS nowadays has to have had ABS for quite a long time and I think they have to have um, I don't know if it's traction control but some kind of anti skidding thing stability control whatever this thing where either power is cut to individual wheels or the brakes are applied to individual wheels as the car's computer realises that you're about to skid usually when you go around a corner too fast but the new ones that are coming in now I was in a car not long back that had um, automatic cruise control ACC I think that's what it stands for and essentially I was going down the motorway set it to 70 and if a car was going in front of me sl more slowly the car would slow down by itself sounds great it also had automatic braking and the idea of that was, if a car pulled out in front of you, the car would actually apply its brakes. Apparently when these things first came out, they only did it at kind of town speeds, up to about 20 miles an hour, or sometimes even less than that. But um, the one I was in was doing it at motorway speeds. And that was the one that actually made me turn it off, because you've got this bizarre thing that you always get on a motorway where you're going past a slip road and some person who's left it too late cuts right across the front of you so it goes from maybe the middle lane right across the front of you and into the slip road and when you're driving normally you just let them get on with it when I had this uh, automatic brake in the car would actually stamp on the brakes for me and anybody behind would be quite shocked at that happening but this article was talking about these things and saying that some people don't even know they've got them they don't know what driver aids are on their cars so they don't know they've got ABS they don't know they've got traction control and all these other gadgets until they use them and that leads to an interesting problem apparently that people who don't know they're there get into another car that doesn't have them and expect that car to behave the same way so they will carry on going into corners too fast only when the car is a bit older and doesn't have traction control or stability control they end up going through a hedge or worse across a pavement and taking out the family you know so that was one thing that was said against them now one of the road safety guys actually said a positive thing about this automatic braking when it's done in town and that is that people will you know walk out of the pavement and rather than the driver having to react the car will react for them and brake and also if somebody stops suddenly on the road the car behind might react quicker than the driver of the car behind and brake to avoid 
driving into the back of them. Now apparently 75% of UK collisions are rear-enders and automatic braking has been demonstrated to reduce the risk of a rear-end collision by 20%. So on that side of things it kind of sounds like it's good, doesn't it? The downside is Back in the uh, 70s, I think it was, somebody can correct me if not, in the UK they brought in the mandatory use of seat belts in cars for front seat driver and passenger. Front seat driver, not for the rear seat driver. <laughs> if you have very long arms and legs and sat in the back, you could get away with it. Before they brought in the mandatory seat belts, they'd done lots and lots of testing. And it was proved beyond doubt that wearing a seatbelt in a normal speed collision massively improved the risk, or improved, Im improved the chances that you would not get injured. And in a higher speed collision, massively improved the chances that you would survive even if you were injured. So they were expecting the number of injuries to come right down. I mean, why wouldn't you? Everybody's now wearing a seatbelt. You're not gonna face plant the windscreen anymore, it's obvious. Only they didn't. Accidents didn't go up, but injuries didn't come down. So why was that? And it was the rather perverse uh, answer that once people felt safer because they had the seatbelt on, they took other risks instead. So they would drive faster. Because they thought, well, the seatbelt's going to save me anyway. And of course, when you're going faster, that collision that would have been a, a death is now a serious injury, potentially. But people were still having them, still having those serious injuries because they're going too quick. And this, I think, is the problem with a lot of these driver aids that are all about safety. When people get used to them, when people think, well, the car will save me, they start to feel safer. So they might drive faster, or they might think, I will do I will send that text, I will check my Facebook, I will make that call. So it's a strange one. These safety devices work and yet at the same time don't. I kind of like the idea that in town the car behind me when I'm on the bike might prevent the idiot in the car behind me from driving into the back of me and writing off my bike and perhaps my legs. Now the back to saying about the uh, completely autonomous car, when that technology's working, I kind of like that idea for a lot of journeys. I like the idea of the, the Google car. I like the idea I can get in it in the morning, program where I want to be and then go to sleep and get there ha happy and refreshed six or seven hours later, better still program it at 10 o'clock the night before and go to sleep and wake up in the morning ready for that business appointment and I've not wasted any of my own time driving there <laughs> how fantastic would that be however they were talking about those as well and saying forget it in London because until all cars have got it it's not going to work in London where you've got too much traffic the car will have to be either programmed to stop for any risk in which case, welcome to the new game that kids can play of step out in front of Google cars and watch them slam on the brakes. Great fun. But um, with that level of traffic, you either program it to stop for everything or you program it to take calculated risks. So what do you think? I think it's a, an interesting, interesting topic. I mean, it might well be that on the driverless cars thing, it's a bit pointless really, we've already got things called driverless cars that take you long distances without you needing a licence and where you can have a glass of wine on the way and text to your heart content and they're called trains and if only the trains didn't cost more than cars to use I think there would be a wonderful alternative anyway thanks for watching everyone ride safe I'm now going to drive off or ride off on my slippery tyres I'm not sure if they are actually slippery or not, or just, just there is no feeling at all through them and it makes it feel slippery. I don't know. Well, I'm getting around these bends alright. Anyway, 
I can't I can't even get through a goodbye without digressing, can I? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ride safe. I'll talk to you all again soon.